Uh, hey, VIP. Let's call this a bonus. Um, I'm going to do kind of like a biz dev video. So here's what I got. I've got a scenario came up that made me realize that I'm, that I'm missing some process documentation or that it needs to be updated. I don't even want to look for my old process documentation. I haven't had to use it in a while. Um, what I mean by that is that I've got a client that I need to give them some information to make them feel good about the process. And I used to have some documents in, uh, you know, for that approach, but I can't imagine that they're good. You know, I've, I've evolved as a person, as I'm sure many of you have, and I have new methodology, new lines of thinking. I just feel like I probably have some new approach that I want to take. So I'm going to go that route is, um, and, and we've got chat GPT. And so we've got new tools and equipment to kind of make the best of this. So, um, and, and what I'm specifically talking about is I want to write a process document that's going to make my client uh, feel really confident because already something's come up that has kind of um, tainted the situation, which is uh, I did a design a year and a half ago, and I passed that design off to a colleague of mine. Um, that colleague of mine, this is a new working relationship with me. Uh, they have a working process that's very different than my own. And... Not that that's a bad thing. It's just not what I expected. And I'm now trying to um, be accommodating to that process. And I'll, and I'll say it just very specifically. Um, when I design, I'm designing for contractors that I know typically take that design and build it right away. And, and we are all kind of on the same page. And we're designing for clients that just expect us to give them something great without asking a ton of questions. And I guess I didn't realize that that's what my typical client has been for a long time. Um, so this designer that I actually really adore, um, I'm not gonna say their name in, on camera, but many of you know them. Um, they have a different process. They go through selections and spec and budgeting and really sit down with their client, really find out what they need in their life, really um, talk to them about financing, how they're going to fund things, really talk to them about their bottom line and talk to them about their experience. And that's the level of care that this person provides to them. And um, But there was a, a kind of a mishandling of, of the handoff from finally getting to a budget, finally getting a completely reworked design, mind you, um, with some of my original design intent, but it's very much reworked. And um, and then getting it back into my hands, which was always the goal, was I was going to have the construction document phase part of this contract. Um, so that's all working. That all works. That's correct. Um, where it's not working is the expectation, managing the expectation of, on the client side about uh, when that deliverable can actually um, be made. And so... They're assuming that construction documents are are nearly done, whereas I'm going to say that it's going to be four to six weeks out, and that's going to upset this client. So I want to take that heat off of, of my contractor, right, the, this handoff. I want to take that heat off of them and give a process document to the client that's going to make them feel good. Be very succinct about what I'm delivering and why it takes time to deliver it, and then also lend that same level of care that, that this other contractor had been giving them up to this point. And, and that's a level of care that I don't, believe it or not, typically give. Um, and, and it's time to evolve. And it's time for me to have more of this process documentation you know, embedded into my systems. And also, it's really time to take a step back and care a little bit more about everything that I do. I feel like I care a lot about a lot of things that I do, but I know full well that there are times where I'm like, just get off of me. Just let me do this. Just, you know, I'm going to get it done. Just trust in the process. You know what? I shouldn't have that expectation that someone has to trust me. I should earn that trust always. I should put that leg forward. I should know what this person's going through that I'm about to deliver on, you know, a, a major significant change in their life. That should matter to me. And it doesn't. I'm being honest. It doesn't right now. And so I need to make that change. And 
I think part of making that change is initiating conversation through something that might be impactful. And so I think this process document is a nice initiation. It starts a conversation and it's, it also opens them up to contacting me. Whereas I do a lot to make sure that people don't contact me because I get contacted a lot. So I have a lot of process documentation so that people do not contact me and it should be the inverse. And I need to find a way to make sure that that is always a happy experience to me because ultimately I do really enjoy doing things for other people. I take great enjoyment in that, but there's a disconnect and I don't know what it is. So maybe I can discover it. And so what the, that's kind of why I'm recording this is I'm just being real with you about my process and where I hope to be. And I always want, hope to be to this next level. And it's really nice to kind of play my own devil's advocate. And I know I have things to work on. So, um, so here we go. We're going to start this document. And I'm in Google Docs, which I've never used before. Well, I have. It turns out I have, but um, many years ago. And I'm looking at their yeah. template stuff. And I'm thinking, this looks terrible. <laughs> It doesn't represent my brand. None of this template stuff looks anything like anything that I would put out there. Um, I don't know that. I mean, I guess I could start searching for things. But then the next part of this is like, I, man, I have the tool right here. Believe it or not, Chief Architect is so much more than an architectural tool. I've used some of the best programs out there for you know, creating brochures in design. Um, um, you know, I can't even think of all the ones out there right now, to tell you the truth, but there's so many that I've touched. And there's so many that I've used before to create documents like this. Um, I, I feel like I had one of the best looking resumes ever when I was in the field of construction. Hell, I'll bring it up right now. We'll see what it even looks like. Maybe I'm remembering it wrong. <laughs> Floating my own, my own, popping my own collar. Is that what it would be? Uh, let me see if I can find it. That'd be funny. Um, and so, anyways, to kind of bring this back, and I know I'm big on the chief architect bandwagon, but it's true. This thing is built to be um, a, a, a compiler. You have so much capabilities with graphics, and you combine it with something like Photoshop, and we just have kind of a graphic juggernaut, if you will. You can do everything that you could do in InDesign, and I've done some really fantastic things in InDesign. I'll give you some examples of it. Um, but let's go look at my resume from 2015 and see if this is worth a damn. <laughs> be very curious about that um, because I used to think that it was so we'll see what is this looking like mobile resume email yeah I did not follow the traditional approach and it served me really really well which means that I, I just I didn't follow the typical resume template and I threw some graphics in here and I did a little bit more and back in 2015 this does look a little bit modern a little bit new and I even threw some rendering or actually some projects that I hand built. There's a kitchen I hand built, a couple kitchens I hand built. Um, there's a rendering versus actual back in 2013, I think. Um, some design stuff I did, some construction document. Yeah, I had a massive, massive resume. I listed my tool inventory. That's kind of a funny approach. Um, notable experience in trade. And then I had one of these scannable things before that was ever even a thing really this thing worked really well for me yeah i guess i am still proud of that cool um and then what was the other thing i was thinking oh just um some indesign stuff in terms of uh working documents let me see if i can even find it example pdfs headshots Let's see if we can pick one up real quick No, not Winter's Wine Cellar. I'll have to come back to that. I'll have to like share that a little bit later because I know it's in here somewhere. Um, but did some really great looking, high level looking stuff for um, commercial FF and E projects. So, um, so I know that Chief is capable of doing this high level graphic design. And so here's what I got. I'm I went into uh, Chat GPT and I asked it. I'll, I'll just read it aloud. And skip through this or cut this video if you don't want to be in it for this. This, this may be something you, you don't care about and you've already got this part handled, but I'll tell you what my approach was. 
I said, I need a brief that explains the step-by-step -step process of the construction document phase. Please list that we're going to need a structural engineer. Actually, let's change that. This is me doing voice to text, by the way. I said, let's state that there is always a possibility that we might need an engineer for the project and an engineer would be required for any kind of structural modifications. Construction documents can take anywhere from four to six weeks. Typically the process that I create architectural documents over the course of the initial two to three weeks and then there's a review. I wanna note what I'm doing right now and it's something I wanna correct. I'm talking through this as if I don't care about it because I'm trying to get to the conclusion. And that is, I, I liken it to just droning on. I recognized it in someone that I'm dating. And she's actually a fantastic person. And she likes working through these things with me. And I like working through my own personal things with her as well. And, and I, so I recognize it because I recognize it in myself. I'm doing the same thing. So I'm droning on. So this is part of it. This is all part of it is when I'm talking to a client, I want to care about everything I'm saying. And in order to do that, I need to maybe let go of some of the minutia, some of the finite details that matter a lot to me because I get hyper-focused and get to the crux of a story, become a storyteller. I feel like when I tell a story, I can tell a very good story. But when I am not in storytelling mode, that is when I have no emphasis. There's no... Um, Oh, I don't even know what the tonal terms are for this, but intonation, not quite, I'm not quite getting that right, but just, I'm not abbreviating and I'm not self-editing and I'm not finding any importance in the things that I'm saying because I am trying to get to, you know, what I want to say and what I ha had envisioned saying in the first place. So take pause, value the words that you're saying make them feel important to you so that they are important to them. And then maybe we can get somewhere. So I got an outline out of this process and I think it's a pretty good outline and I might make some edits along the way, but it's somewhere to start and it's a very good place to start. The one thing about this outline that it does not do, this was handling a problem. I saw this as an answer to a problem and the problem was that we're gonna have a client that's gonna be upset about a timeline. And so this is, very succinctly stating that there is no way we are gonna meet any timeline but the one that I state, right? And there's reasons for that, great. But that doesn't leave you with a warm and fuzzy feeling. That doesn't make you feel like, hey, I like, I like this, you know, this, this, this is a bad conclusion. So what's a good conclusion? Well, with that in mind, I say, okay, perfect. Now write an excerpt similar to a blog about the complications of living through a construction project, some advice regarding best practices and handling questions. And then on top of that, I don't want it to feel like I'm just hitting you with boilerplate stuff, even though I'm going to state that this is largely boilerplate to just be very succinct with the client. But in there, I'm gonna mix in some personal things, which means I need to know some personal things that I care about for this project, which means I actually need to go look at this project. It doesn't matter that it's not in contract yet. It doesn't matter that I haven't gotten an invoice paid yet. It doesn't matter that I don't have the deposit. I need to take the time to go look at the project again to familiarize myself with their lives, right? So here's our next bit is, I'm sorry, I got a spot of sun right on my face. Give me pause this for a second. It's right in my face. <laughs> it's right on my nose like I got a bug. There we go. No, it's still right there. It's coming from some unknown, unknown entity. Maybe? Oh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> Anyways. Um, so, forget where I left off. Um, so the next part about this was that I still need to make some notes about best forms of communication for myself, right? How do I handle communication well? How do I receive it well? I wanna be successful in communicating with this client because the more successful I am in communicating with the client, the better off this experience is gonna be. So um, I'm going to be better and more intent on satisfying the client's needs if my, um, the way I receive communication is being met. So I need to be clear about that, which is that 
I don't want a bunch of individual email threads. I want a single individual email thread that I can track through the history of the project. That's important to me. Next part is I don't answer text messages. I don't even see them. I don't have notifications on. So that's a really bad method of communication and clients do tend to do that if you aren't very specifically stating that you know you don't do that in your business practice. So I need to be clear about that. The next part is that I might be collaborating with someone that has a system and I am absolutely open to that system. In this case, my other contractor uses Asana. I'm going to be fine collaborating in Asana. So I want to state that as well. So let's see what do we get from ChatGPT. And a large part of this video is it's going to be a long video because we're doing this live. I'm not going to halt the, the recording. And it's, it's not live, forgive me, because I'm not I'm not streaming this. I didn't have any way of streaming this privately to a specific group. So I'm recording it, but it is me just live without an outline again. So here's what we are getting from ChatGPT, which is, um, and it's going to be generic and I'm going to have to edit it. Construction projects are often synonymous with excitement and anticipation, whether it's a home renovation or a commercial build out. So already, that's, that's a no-go for me. I don't care to describe a construction project. I, I mainly want to talk about the complications of living through it. So um, I don't need a, a big fluffy intro. I just want to start in right away and, and state very clearly. If you've never been through a construction project before, I'd just like to let you know that it can be a very challenging time in your life. And so maybe I will say as much and get it to rewrite that as an introduction. So it's noting noise and dust, obviously, unexpected delays. I'm glad that that's in there. Budget overruns, certainly. And we can mention that, you know, maybe um, you have someone that's managing your budget and, you know, keep that conversation going with them to make sure that you're always on the same page. And also, don't hesitate to say you're feeling overwhelmed or you're feeling like you don't have a grasp on all the information coming your way, right? So that would be an important start as well. And then I've got that excerpt about preferred uh, communication methods. That's great. We'll have to edit that as well. And then best practices and handling questions. I like that. That kind of handles what we just mentioned, asking questions. Feel free to ask questions. And then a small conclusion. Now, I don't care to sit here and edit this quite yet because I want to start to form my process document in a way that I think will be well received. And and a lot of that is putting care and polish into um, that document's look and feel. Graphics mean a lot to me. I think graphics can tell a big story. If we're to pull up our Discord server and just take a look, I mean, I have full confidence that this server can become can become something big. Um, there's one thing about it that I'm always going to fight with, which is my name's on the door. And I don't always like that. Um, sometimes I, I just feel like I should be a silent partner in the whole endeavor. And then this is just a community of people getting together with some like minds and, and, and some not like minds and culturally different and from different regions, just brain sourcing and really getting things put together and helping each other out. So, um, so sometimes having my name on the door hinders that to me. I feel like it's everybody else's thing. So, I mean, I'll tell you, I, I, I'm, I'll call it, we'll call it meditating. I meditate sometimes. And, and this is a big part of it is understanding that, um, everybody involved in this makes me and, and that's how I really truly feel. So, um, that being said, when you look at this, I, I always see part of the success of this is that I want to lend everything that I think I have to lend in terms of structuring this so that everybody is very successful and feeling successful in their communications and in their endeavors. And to me, graphics on a screen means everything. This to me is welcoming. We have graphics, there's life here, there's intrigue. You immediately come in here and go, boy, I could, I could look at some of this stuff. I wonder what this is. And maybe it's fun and maybe it's playful and maybe it's informative. So. Graphics to me are, are paramount. And, and I mean, we know that. We know that from demographic key sales and you name it. We know that. We're selling graphics when we're doing architectural design. We are. So 
graphics is that's huge and let me and let me think this through and let me come up with a way that i can make this process document be you know graphically important and and so i'm thinking i just have to start because i don't know what that looks like yet but i can bank on some past experiences so i think that starts by just let's open up a plan template <laughs> and we're not and we're not using this for architectural design. And in fact, we're deleting everything. So, and we can just do that right off the bat. Delete objects, delete everything, select all, delete it. Yep, turn it all off, don't need it. And you could start from a CAD detail, but I don't think I need to. Um, let's talk about limitations of the software when we're using it for purely a graphic design basis. Um, a great part of using it for graphic design basis is that you know sending it to layout is a really powerful thing because we're getting something that's built into Adobe InDesign, which is um, their framework, frames. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. Um, and so maybe we're actually approaching this not by doing plan views, but by actually doing CAD details is probably gonna be the best way of doing this. So, and in fact, then I don't even want to use my own template. Hey, there's a first. I haven't not used my own template for anything in a very long time. Um, or since I'm, maybe I want to be stubborn, we will use my own template. <laughs> and we'll just delete everything. So we can come in here, select all CAD details, shift select, and delete it all. <laughs> so now I'm still using my own template. And so I want to create a CAD detail, and we're going to show an example graphic and why this is so dang powerful. And then from there, let's get into back into our um, biz dev section and get into this. And we'll just take this graphic as an example. So I'm gonna click on this. Actually, you don't need to click on this. You just click on the web button. It's gonna bring us to that web version of that particular document. Hopefully it would anyways, maybe it's not. It doesn't seem to be, all right. We'll click on this and we'll click on open in browser and we can just copy this. Copy this image and we'll paste it into chief. And before I even paste it, I don't care about the drawing sheet here. What I will care about is the drawing sheet when it gets to layout. So um, here's my paste, hopefully should have been Seems to be working. There we go picture and I don't necessarily care about the scale except for that I think that I want to just um, in terms of pixel based approach I want to keep everything similar in scale so I'm going to keep it within the drawing sheet is what I'm going to do and it doesn't need to be exact next thing I'm going to do is send this to layout um, let's see if I can remember how to do that why I'm forgetting how to do that there we go um, and we need to pick just the standard scale and does that matter I don't know so we'll just stick with the quarter inch it's been a while since I've done this okay from here we get to just kind of delete everything including our page zero right so everything on the screen so I'm going to turn the drawing sheet off so I don't even have that in selections and then delete all this and then is there a quick way to delete everything else? I think we still get to do this in the project browser, right? Um, so pages. And I think we just get to select all these, delete all. Yep. There we go. And we're left with it's like one extra page. Then let's turn the drawing sheet back on and get into drawing sheet setup. And so I want just an eight and a half by 11 process document. Okay, one to one scale. There we go. And we forgot that it needs to be in our um, portrait mode. Portrait. Okay. And where are we from here? There we go. Blank document. So now we get to start that over again, that example graphic. Scale's too large. So that's an interesting thought, right? And I mean, that makes sense. And so let's use our tool here, this pan scale layout box and mouse wheel down. Uh, 
and it's a slow mouse wheel. There we go. So really, any kind of graphic like this is going to be about this scale. So 1 32nd to 1, um, which means that, you know, maybe it would be beneficial to scale in here as well. So let's do that. Which means we're going to be copying this CAD detail over and over again. So here's that 8.5 by 11 again, portrait mode. There we go. Scale this here. Oh, I don't think I got a uniform scale. That's too bad. Help if we hit the right buttons, right? So this makes a lot more sense. We're scaling to the size that we want already, right? So graphic like this is going to take up something like that, and we're going to get some text around it, okay? So here's where the great part of this comes in, and let's... Let's recenter this. Let's go ahead and pick this up and put it back to the scale that it should be. All right, quarter inch scale. There we go. Okay. So here's the great part is we get to take this view, which is way too large. Send it again. We get to take this view, which is way too large, and we can clip. That's the great part of this is that it doesn't matter if there's some additional text in whatever graphics you're getting, you can always clip, okay? The next part of this is I don't think I really need any kind of, um, whatchamacallit here, the, the box label. So we can turn box labels off, which means we're gonna put it on the box label off. That's box borders, box labels on. So, there we go. All right. And then from here, we get to paste our text around here, right? And so this is the start of creating that graphics. And so we can create washes. We can do uniform changes on our page zero. We can do multiple templates, um, page templates, layout page templates, so that you have different sections if you want to and you can use this over and over again. So I already know that I wanna have my logo in here somewhere. So let me get into just my folder organization in regards to this. Um, it's always gonna be in assets for me. And then I have um, a section called images and underneath images, I have logos and graphics. And then I have my rapid design logos. And if you don't do this for your own company, please note if you've got a branding company or something that's handling your logos, that's great. Um, you need so many different logos for different types of branding, for different types of media, for different media outlets, for different, just for new flair. You need, you know, clipped versions of logos. You need full versions of logos. You need business card stuff. And then you need them in various different, um, either raster-based or vector-based setups and at different resolutions. So I've got a ton of this stuff in here, and I adjust and fix them as I need to. Um, I'd probably say that I'm gonna use something of a more professional version of my logo. Now keep in mind, I organize this folder based on resolution. So the prefix here is the resolution of that image, which means that if I want a higher resolution image, I'm gonna go farther down the stack. So this 2100 logo is gonna be a higher resolution. So that's probably a pretty good place to start. And that drag and drop just did not work, which I've noticed. Um, has not been working lately. It's funny. Oh, it might be that it's a Photoshop document. That's what it is. So probably good to organize by type. So if you group, you right click in a blank space, go group by type if you're in a Windows machine. So there we go. Now I'm looking at JPEG or PNG images, right? And within that, that's where I've got this big logo. And that looks pretty good. Now, same thing. You, you can still clip in here. It's just a different method. It's not quite the same. So you can still clip and then resize. So we know we're gonna like set up some print margins and maybe it's a good idea to just kind of set that up ahead of time if you want, which you can obviously do just by snapping a CAD box 
here and then grab that CAD box, uncentrically, oops, uncentrically resize it. So copy, paste, uncentrically resize. And then you can specify your margins, right? So um, I think this margin's about right. I'm showing 11 sixteenths. Let's make it a solid three quarters of an inch, okay? And then we're just selecting not the drawing sheet, but that actual CAD box and subtracting that intersection. And then we can make this CAD box very clear by just putting in a, uh, a fill. Right, and maybe we'll. Oops. Small fill. Small fill, big fill. I gotta call my buddy Phil. I haven't talked to him in a while. I should. Um, all right, so. And then let's get my text in here from ChatGPT. So here's our construction document base. And do I want to lead with that or not? I don't know. But we're going to just throw it in there anyway. And I think we just get to paste, and that's regular text. Can't seem to figure out how to paste right now. <laughs> there we go. And actually, it kept its formatting because it's rich text. And look at that. Cool. And because it's rich text, we're at a quarter inch scale. Um, I want to be able to dynamically resize it. So I am going to keep it in, in layout versus, versus plan view. Um, you could do this all in plan. You absolutely could. But I, I do believe there's some benefits from sending it from, from plan to layout. Namely, because we're creating a template that can be used over and over again where you just replace the core plan and then replace the images in the core plan. So it's kind of what we're doing here. Um, so it's important then, if we're going to create a system to be able to do these same kind of process documents later for other things like brochures and stuff, to name your CAD details in a way that's impactful and will mean something later on, which is, you know, image placeholder one, image placeholder two, or something like that. Okay. That being said, I think I want to just change this entire body of text. What are we getting at at? Um, What's the size of our print at this scale at an eight and a half by 11 would be a really great question. Um, because I think this is too large. So if we take this down to cut in half. What does this look like? That actually still looks large to me if I know the document like. I don't want to do the math. I'm just going to wheel it. That looks like an appropriate size. And let's get back and make sure that we're doing um, an auto height. Okay. And I think I want to split this. So we're going to leave part of this as maybe we'll take number three here and exit. Roll X. Make sure we've got our auto height. This still should be selected, right? And then we should be able to control paste again. Oh. And funny that when we paste, it bumped that back up to some kind of default. So let's just change the default, right? So get into here to active defaults. Here's our active defaults. Here's our text. I'm gonna change this. Rich text. Make a new one. So this is going to be three thirty second text. Easy peasy. Now, when we paste that, it should go back to that three. Right. There we go. So that being said, let's grab our graphic and start to kind of form our document, right? Now, some tools out there are going to be better than Chief for this. Absolutely. But the point is that we have this. It's already on our machines. It's ready to go. And this 
can be used dynamically. And we know we've got some smart features in Chief that can really make an impact with this. Um, we definitely know we can get linking out of this, so we can embed links in the print document. Um, and we can do some funny things with callouts where we're not making it actually look like a callout, we're making it look like some kind of text annotation or who knows what. So there's a couple things I can think of um, where this might be beneficial to do this document in this, in this form, right? I'm gonna get a heading up here and then here we go, that's kind of a first page layout, right? And it's very simple, it's very basic. So we wanna kind of zhuzh this up a little bit Get some additional graphics in here, make this look nice. Would it look interesting with a wash behind it? Maybe, I don't know. Um, definitely gonna work on you know, whatever this media is going to be. And I haven't even formulated that thought yet. Just wanna structure this first. Um, we already see we've got some issues here and that this is gonna be a three, right? And how do we get that? Some of the some of the um, approach here is perplexing, where you can't edit some of this stuff the way you might want to. Bulleting it for, I think you can do this actually. Here, bullets, numbers. For prefix number suffix, no, not what I want because that's not going to help. So formatting gets a little, a little goofy here. That seems to be okay. Okay, and now let's do some brainstorming. Let's actually look online, take a look at some examples. I'm going to look at a process documentation examples, and then um, we'll kind of do a little breakout here. Uh, a graphic example. Maybe throw in the word beautiful, because that's self-described, which means that that's not an actual document that's a deliverable, that's someone that some, something's bragging about, right? An operator word. And then maybe something else we'll do is, because I just know this world and I know that it is typically very pretty, is an FF and E uh, proposal. And let's get some image-based ideas. And I'm just kind of taking a once over to look through this and see what people are coming up with. So I love this, that already this already calls to me, right? And so we'll do something like this. We'll just do a screen clipping and bring it back to Chief real quick. Back to Chief real quick. And there we go. Drop this in. And keep in mind, however far you're zoomed in is going to be how this you know, kind of populates. So I want this just on the side to kind of give me an idea of some thoughts about how I might want to structure the look of this. Okay. Take a little bit more browse through, start looking at some of these other documents. Um, I kind of like this, this is interesting. I like that kind of like transparent overlay. Might be cool to have a rendering of this person's project behind it, could be cool, right? That could be impactful. Um, so let's zoom in real tight and then we get our paste. Remember how to do it. I'm hitting Alt Tab to go back to my previous window if you're in a Windows machine. I kind of like this very process oriented, you know, big spattering of info that's hitting hitting you and feels comfortable and feels nice. I kind of like this sideways text approach. Not that I use it sideways, but I like the overall you know, contrast here and it pops.
I wouldn't mind doing some graphics where we're kind of doing this. Um, I've already, I already kind of saw something that reminded me of this where um, maybe we're doing, you know, a polyline that's got some color fill. Um, fills turn on here. Color coding. So it's got, oh, this isn't a fill. What am I doing? Um, create color fills there you go be a better approach so a solid color kind of keep this in the white pastels where you're doing this the like arrow like down right and this is another argument for throwing this into the plan versus layout, but here you go. Where are you doing like an arrow here? The next point, right? Some something like that, where it's arrow to you know a color to a color to a color. So, and right now this is what I call ideation. We're just kind of brainstorming. What do we want this document to look like? How do we keep this fresh? How do we make this look very impactful? I can tell you already. I might want to do some hand drawn graphics. That can certainly make an impact. Um, so let's just generate something while we're waiting, get into that discord server, get into our ideation again, and let's just do an imagine and enter. Sketch on hand drawing sketch on, well, let me just say this out loud so you can hear it. White background of a simple character looking only slightly confused with a construction hard hat on looking at the camera i mean so that's something right i don't need to know what the thing is going to be i just know that i need to start somewhere and and this again is just ideation this is place marker stuff it's just kind of coming up with some ideas so Already I'm looking at what they're producing and I, and I don't like it. So I'm going to kind of switch it up and make my own real quick. So I just want some idea to be able to throw on the page, which is we're gonna switch from my main screen to my Photoshop screen real quick. You can see an infinite display in there. Now you should see Photoshop. So let's do a new drawing and it's just gonna be a 512, 512 or 768, 768. And let me get into just real quick here. Um, brush out. Uh oh. My. It's not working here. My Photoshop action's not working my brush I need to set some things up oh well we'll figure it out okay so um I kind of want some character I don't know why this is painting in that mode oh we're in erase mode what happened So it's going to be someone like this hard hat, right? And maybe they're looking at construction documents. <laughs> Worst drawing I've ever done. <laughs> you can go play Pictionary now. That's great. But that is kind of the point is I want something like this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See if we can't get this into uh, describe on Discord.
pop this in and you should be able to navigate to wherever your screenshots are stored. Grab that. <laughs> See what Discord thinks of this. Certainly did not, Discord did, I mean, um, uh, Mid Journey did not make me a happy construction worker, did they? Okay, so let's try a couple of these. Why not? I like that one of the descriptions is a cartoon animal dressed in a bunny hat is holding a newspaper. Hey, it's a bunny hat. Why not? <laughs> All right, looking at a paper. All right. Yeah. I like how they drew Jesus. Is one of them. <laughs> the second drawing is Jesus. Yeah, we're a little far off. And then the fourth one is Shaggy from Scooby-Doo looking at a newspaper. And I actually like, I like the first one. Um, oops, I want to cancel the job. I want a variation on the first one. There's an hands holding a book. Let's go hands holding a newspaper. And it's gonna keep that same seed, so it's gonna do that same drawing style when you uh, do a variation. So that's, that's pretty cool. And then maybe we could have just varied by region as well. So we can do that as well. We'll do vary by region, and we'll just take the lasso and kind of select this book and everything around it like that. And then um, that is, Part one, we need to do a part two because we essentially want him to be holding a newspaper that's in front of his chest. Oops, a little long, there you go. And then part three is this part, right? And so we can do that out of this newspaper part again. Alternatively, we could save this and bring this into Photoshop and do gener generative infill. Um, and we're getting really close on this version four. I kind of like that, so. And I like the fade that they have on this version as well. Yeah, close. Upscale version. So let's get back to the ideation part of this. Look how funny that is. They changed this into all kinds of goofy little things. Here's this, let's go ahead and open them up, open a browser, copy and browser. Back into cheat. And for now, I'm not gonna do the CAD block thing. I'm just gonna paste. I kind of like him at the bottom of the screen. It's clever. But I also like it there too. So I don't know, that's kind of giving me some ideas. Let's start running with this FF and E talks and maybe we can get a render of their project. So let's take a look inside and see their project. I'm gonna open this up off screen, kind of client protection for a minute. A renders folder here. Oh, and it's empty. Okay. Um, got a PDF. See if there's anything worth looking at in the PDF. Not really. Possibly an elevation like this blown up might be nice. So let me see if I can't get to that.
maybe we'll pull an elevation below it up. Always interesting collaborating with someone, they have a different process. So that's not a particularly eventful thing elevation. Let's see if this K5 is kind of a split around this bar area here, even though it's half split on the stools. So clearly furniture is not in this elevation. Not particularly wonderful either. Let's see if we pull a rendering. Something kind of do a graphic. Change that. There was originally some skylights in here, so maybe that changed. And look at these floating outlets. Fun. So I can just kind of edit those out. I'm not too worried about it. And especially because a lot of this is scene. So I kind of feel like this is it. This is our shot. This gets to be kind of the part of the background of the document, right? And that gives it a little bit of a personal touch. We're working on this. It's clear we are because the process document we're giving is their project in the background. I do like that approach. So we'll have to see if we can make it work. What are we sampled out at? No, we're not capping light. I don't know why that setting is not checked. Big heat sample of this image. Right. Okay. So get back to this fill, make it a transparent background. helps and then um, kind of an easy way to kind of place things here is maybe we actually just copy paste this in place and then concentrically resize it that Okay, so there's our document. Let's see what happens when we start pulling this into the white. Okay. And now the next thing is we need kind of a graphic fade on this, um, which is an easy enough process. If you take this back into Photoshop, I don't have hotkeys to switch this back and forth, so um, take this back into Pro Photoshop, do a control new. It's already got, well, control new should have its clipboard intact usually, um, which for some reason it does not. Maybe a saving plan. It's funny that we can't export a particular image once we've just clipped and pasted. I almost needed to export this in. Um, because I was going to do a fade. Now, another method for a fade is we could literally put some kind of color fill polyline over the top of this right? and underneath our text. Then we're doing some kind of air stuff. So let's go solid fill. And 
gonna select a uh, excuse me, line style. Set this to twenty. That gets over. But we need to maintain that this is. don't want to wash them we want a dark wash and maybe we take it in there Photoshop and blur it so try this again oh I probably didn't do that. still on Photoshop let me see Photoshop we are. Okay. Um, so let's just make this a convert this to a smart object. Do a duplicate. Oops, not new. Do a control J duplicate. And then let's bring a blur in. Caution blur. Bump this up. And it's just enough to look like the project is what we're looking for here. Be able to take this, open it, and where can I place this where it's recognized? That's the next. Because they've seen this rendering, right? That's a big part of it. Absolutely seen. So does this pop off the screen is our next question. Um, also, I think we actually need to take this fade, dark fade out now. Definitely substantially looking at what do we ears and looking like they're so I always copy move over I tell you to remember whatever distance you're setting this to so uh, ten would be an easy one for me but let's go eleven get off the screen a little bit now I can kind of clip this. Visualize. So where are we now, and how far off are we on on this look? So our rabbit design logo needs to be a white point, a white. Point. I have to kind of it. Playing with an updated, better looking. Um. Uh. 
I like that this just came from kind of a section. We want this whole document. And difficult to read this, so how are they getting this? Because they're not having, they don't have a ton of graphics in here. Part of it. We have to get this balance somehow. Right now, this is way too hard to read. And maybe we just um, are creating a wash that it uses this color palette so that every graphic fits, right? What happens when I take it back into Photoshop to a heavier blur? And I'm gonna do this off screen, it shouldn't take me. I got a heavy blur and now I'm, I'm going to significantly lighten that blur. So I'm getting those same colors, but softer. And again, this is just composition closing. I blend these two. Go get the, the look at that imagery. Oh no. Guess what guys, session's over. My mouse just ran out of batteries. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> oh, boy. I can't even pause. Sorry, guys. You have to wait. Take a break. Go get a drink. Be right back. Uh-oh, we got a crash. Crash based on the mouse, funny. Crash holds up, maybe not. Mouse is back in action. I got some jelly bellies.
What is some kind of dog? Can we get this drawing top of the screen? All right, so maybe that's a little bit more interesting. Oh. Um, I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like I'm killing, killing the game, doing fantastic things, incredible things. And other times I'm like, man, is this looking bad? <laughs> but I know I'll get there, confidence. I'm confident I will get there. Might not be today, though. Might not be today. Okay. It takes a lot to record this stuff. It takes a, even more to go live. I have. I got to understand where you're even going with something to go live. It would have been nice to get some fun engagement with everybody, but I don't think that would have worked for them. I didn't know where I was going to go. All right. Here's what we got here. I want this fill to remain on this guy, so we're gonna actually have to export this instead of doing my cheapy way of doing things so that we can get some transparency in a PNG. Again, I'm just trying to get a look and feel right now. Some kind of
Um, in which case you need add connect CAD segment. Oh, let's see, fill color, some fill. Find these things. do very easily check this out alt t k k and then send back send backwards and so i can on the fly know that i've ever used alt shift new so i didn't know that one let's bind this to my front arrow key which is currently set to point to point move i need to make sure that i'm putting that back at the end of this right send backwards Bring forward. Actually, I want to bring forward to be that. Try set this back, right? Done. No big deal. Okay. Um, what's this looking like? I don't know. It's not bad for a draft. Um, definitely don't have enough contrast in here, and maybe it just needs to have to do with the font. Maybe this still needs to lighten up, this background lighten up still more. Um, we can't, this is why it's nice to send this to plan first and then layout because we can shrink this without affecting effectively losing pixels so we lost pixels so now i have to resize this in order to get it larger right and then if i shrink this again that burns pixels so it's much nicer to send from layout and you've got a frame box you can work with works much better and trade this out very simply so um if we're going to build this into a template that's the approach we should take definitely from plan Info goes up here. Stuff, yeah. I think this is it. I think this gets to be kind of like a session one. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I feel a little heavy about this process. Hope you enjoyed it. And give me any insights if you managed to watch this all the way through.